Hey guys, Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach. Um, let's see here. So I'm just preparing Kim's dinner. And um, I was on a chat today in a, in a thread on Facebook in a group. And um, I wanted to talk to you guys about it because I see this all the time. People have kids, they have babies, and they don't prepare at all their pets um, or their routines um, or their homes <laughs> for bringing a new baby in. And um, so the question was uh, uh, posed, a lady was, you know, had a picture of I think it was just a stock image, but I mean, just to get the idea of, you know, a, a food bowl and a water bowl on the floor and the food bowl was filled with kibble and a baby that had crawled up to it and like had their hand in the um, food bowl. And her question was, uh, you know, that her, her baby is, you know, crawling around better and getting around better and starting to show interest in things that we don't want babies to show interest in, but they do because that's how they learn the world, right? Um, and she doesn't want her baby to get into and eat the cat food, so she wanted to know what she should do. And for the most part, at least by the time I had started, co or I commented on the post, um, for the most part, people weren't really offering a whole lot of helpful advice. Um, in fact, somebody had posted that, um, or, or actually I'll get to that in a minute. So the best thing you can do when you're gonna, when, when you're pregnant and you know you have to prepare, there's so many things you have to prepare for, um, you know, when, when you know you're, you have a baby coming into the home. Um, but one of the things you really need to do, and so many people uh, miss completely, is prepare your pet for the arrival of your baby. And as part of baby proofing your home, um, figuring out what you're going to do with the, you know, the food and water bowls, I mean, that's part of it. Um, and so many people wait until it's kind of like too late. Like the child is already getting into things they shouldn't be getting into, or maybe has ingested something they shouldn't have ingested. And then they're like, oh crap. And honestly, some people will just get rid of their pets as if they're not living beings. They're part of your family. Um, so obviously, obviously, we never want that to happen. Um, so preparing ahead of time is really crucial in this instance. But, so here's what I said. Um, I said, hey, you know, the best thing you can do right now for both your baby and for your cat is to stop free feeding and start meal feeding. Um, and very, very unfortunately, um, and almost immediately, somebody commented that that was just too much of a hassle, that their cat is just going to be a pain in the butt and um, because they're going to want their food all the time. It's like, come on, guys, really? Like, you know kids get hungry too and they wake you up in the middle of the night and you're not like oh this is just too much of an inconvenience like they're part of your family and they're living beings and they have wants and needs and you were free feeding them to begin with um so you got them addicted to a free feeding buffet in your home so it's your responsibility to take control of that and and make their health and their life better by um, switching from a fee free feeding system, which is just an open buffet, and I'm, and I'm not like I'm not coming on here just to berate people <laughs> about this, but like it really frustrated me when this person said this today, and I'm like, so many people think this way, and this is one of the reasons why we have such a huge problem in our country with millions and millions and millions of dogs and cats being put into the shelter system every year. We don't have a good solution to this because people, and, and the reason it, it's because, you know, it starts in your home 
and it starts with raising your kids right and tr and and treating animals with the love and respect that they need they're our responsibility and for us to just kick them out of the house at the slightest inconvenience is so incredibly frustrating to me um but anyway let's get back on point so what i said was hey you know the best thing you can do for your cat and for your baby is to pick up the all you can eat every day all day long 24 hour buffet i didn't quite say it like that but that's what it is pick up the food don't free feed and meal feed your cat and believe me i understand um how difficult that can be but also, believe me, you can do it and your cat will get used to it. I have a multi-cat household and for their entire life, because I didn't know any better, they were free fed kibble all day, all night long. And I was like obsessive about it, thinking that for many years, thinking that making sure their bowl was constantly full was me being the best parent, pet parent I could be. When that's the farthest thing from the truth. Obviously, we want to make sure that they're fed and that they are receiving all the nutrition that they need, but the buffet that we put out for our pets is killing them. Like, I wanna say the last time I had checked, it was like 30 or 40% of um, either dogs or cats. One of them's higher than the other, but our dogs and our cats, are increasingly every single year this number increases are um, overweight or mo uh, obese and this free feeding um, situation that we've put ourselves in that we've uh, given to our pets is the reason for this and it's like 90 percent of the reason for this the other 10 percent i would say is lack of exercise but i think especially with dogs a lot of dogs do get um a, a lot of exercise but our cats don't and they definitely do not need a buffet. So we need to switch over to uh, a meal feeding. And this is going to help in this situation. And doing this before your baby comes home is, um, I mean, if, if you're pregnant now, or even if you have a child, um, of course, doing this before your baby comes home is gonna be the best for both you and your cat, because yes, it's going to take a little while. For my cats, it took, two to three weeks before they really adjusted and they weren't like screaming at me every time I went to feed them. Um, now they're totally fine with it. They know the drill. They know that they're fed three times a day and you know, they understand and they're good with that and they're not screaming at me anymore. And I understand that, you know, that frustration of, oh my gosh, my cat is going to be so mad at me. Yeah. But you're doing the right thing for them. And it's just like when you have to, um, I, I don't want to say punish or discipline, but I guess that's the word we would use with our children. Like if they do, if, if uh, you know, they're going to want to eat chocolate cake all day, but that's not the best thing for them. Right. And the first time you say, no, you can't have that. They're going to cry and scream and that's just the way it is, but they're going to learn that, crying and screaming isn't gonna get them what they want. Your cats are gonna be the same way. They're going to learn that crying and screaming isn't gonna get them what they want. As long as you don't give it to them when they're crying and screaming. It's really the same principle. So you can do it. And um, I just wanted to share that. Uh-oh, I gotta go see what Kim is barking at and get her, her dinner. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. But hey, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to answer your questions. Um, if you know somebody who could use this information, share this video with them and feel free to comment below about it or private message me. I'm here to help you guys. So with that, I'm gonna end this video and go check on what she's barking at. Bye.